for this first few minutes on a 2022 Husqvarna TE 150i. 150 cc fuel injected. You know, KTM basically. Put some good stuff on it. So, you know, basic protection, skip plate, bark busters, some rotor guards and stuff. Everything, uh, spark arrestor, so you gotta have that. So there's, you know, less than an hour on it right now, so I'm trying to take it kind of easy. You're not supposed to go over, I think, 50% throttle the first three hours. One thing I can tell you right now, don't love these tires. So these are the Dunlop Geomax AT81s. 13 PSI front and rear, typically what you'd run in Michigan with tubes. I'm used to running a little bit less, because I usually run mooses. I figure I'd give this a try. So, don't really like it as far as tires go. And I'm trying to be really ginger with the throttle. Frankly, so, I guess there's another little aspect here. I'm coming off of a 300, gas gas 300 carburetor bike. So I'm used to a lot of torque. And I was a little bit concerned with the 150 as far as the lack of torque. Honestly, it's pretty good. Like, you definitely, when you whack it, you feel like it's like, oh. But, it's not bad. The power's are really linear. The bike is very nimble. Suspension is all stock. I went through, made sure all the settings are not exactly factory. Always a good start. I'm about 185 pounds and I like my suspension a little softer. So, I usually like the comfort settings. And here you can hear it. No, you can hear it struggling. I'm giving it just a little throttle. You give it the go, it goes. And when it gets on the pipe, it screams. No, no problem going over these whoops. Oh yeah, it's a little tighter. Give me some roots. So I've ridden quite a few TPI bikes. My friends have are all kind of moving in that direction. But I actually haven't ridden a two-stroke Husky ever. So... I don't know. I, honestly, it's not a huge difference, I don't think. I think it's a little bit... feels a little bit more planted in some of the really tight stuff. To be honest. I like the ergonomics. I like the fact that the seat's really flat. I like the power delivery is really nice. Not to mention the bike looks fucking sweet. Yeah, I do feel for like all these whoops. I almost want to bump the compression up a little bit. It's really flush. There's no harshness in the mid stroke or any of that jazz. But the front end is a little loose. Let me speed up the rebound or something too. 
I do really like the brakes. At least the front, the front brake has a lot of feel to it. The rear brake is, eh, take it or leave it. I'm used to, I have a much bigger brake pedal on the gas gas, so I can feel it a lot more. And I think with these tires, it's a little hard to feel what the rear brake is doing, because they just slide. So another thing with the, you know, I was saying I've uh, ridden some of the 250s and 300 TPI bikes. So something to note is the 150 is not counterbalanced. So it's, you definitely feel vibration. It's not as bad as a non counterbalanced like 300 or 250, but it's definitely noticeable. This is the kind of stuff that eats it up. A few more thoughts about the engine. So, the uh, I'll, I'll loop in the transmission in here. Now, I'll start with the things that I like. So, first of all, it's very quiet. Power delivery is pretty smooth, but there is definitely a little bit of a snap if you let it get on the pipe. Pretty sweet. So you can definitely like, if you want to lock the front wheel, you can. So that's engine's a sweetheart. The lack of the counterbalancer kind of sucks. I wish it had one. Definitely is a little bit YB, a little buzzy. It's not too bad. It's, it's a small engine, but it does kind of impact comfort. If you're gonna ride all day. Wish it had one. It would be nice. Because it kind of makes everything hurt a little more. Your hands, your butt, your feet. So, it is what it is. The other thing that I actually don't really like is the transmission is really notchy. Like, I know I, I've heard other people say this about the 150s and the 125s. It's a little notchy, like it's a little hard to shift. On the 300s and on the uh, 250s, it's almost telepathic. Like, you think about being in another gear and you're in another gear. My gas gas probably being the best one that I've ever ridden. That thing is buttery smooth. Be nice. The nicest shifting transmission. This one is a little notchy. It's a little unpleasant. It seems like it's getting a little better, probably as it's breaking in. So maybe that's just a low hour thing. We'll see. These are all just my initial thoughts. This video is probably going to be real long. But you know, if you're in the market for one of these, it might be useful for you. And, uh, you know, this being a small engine, you'd think that you'd have to ride and always, like, on the pipe. And I'm not on the pipe at all. I'm going you know, cruising pretty good. I probably wouldn't go faster on this trail on any bike. You know, you can't really see very far. There's a lot of stuff on the trail. I'm not that great of a rider. So... Yeah, it's definitely, you can ride it, you know, very much like kind of in the bottom of the power band. That way when you need that little extra zap, it's there. But, you know, it's nice linear power, easy to ride. And that's a lot of times, honestly, what makes all the difference as to how well you ride. Most of, uh, you know, the, I assume if you're looking at one of these bikes, you're probably somebody that doesn't just go on the track and do a couple laps. You're going to be out here riding all day. And uh, so it really helps when you uh, have a bike that's easy to ride. And I think the smooth power of the, these TPI bikes is really helpful to that.
So let's talk about ergonomics a little bit now that I've got a little time to feel this out. So things that I like, the bike's really slim and the seat's really flat. So you can really move around the bike really easily. Like it's almost like moving around a bicycle. Uh, compared to my gas gas, the gas gas was a little wider in the back, which was awesome because you could really lock in on uphills. But it was also made it a little harder to get on the back of the bike. So that was a little bit of a problem. So I really like this the slimness of this one. And I like the uh, the fact that the bodywork, there's a lot of it. So if you're wearing uh, boots that have a little bit of that silicone grip stuff on them, or you know, uh, pants with leather in the knees, you, you feel really locked in once you squeeze your knees together. The pegs are really good. I like that. The, uh, like I said, this seat's flat. The bike's a little lower to the ground. I think it's all Huskies, but I'm a 5'11", and uh, I can flat foot both feet easily. No problem, both feet are flat. So this is a good thing. And uh, you know, the pegs are a little older, to lower to the ground, but I haven't really noticed hitting anything, to be honest. And, no knock on wood. There's a lot of people coming through here. Should, I realized I should have told them uh, I didn't have anybody behind me. Concentrated. So I was gonna say the pegs don't feel like they're lower to the ground. They might be. I don't know, to be honest. So far, so good. I'm gonna stop here and knock on wood. I don't wanna be hitting stuff with my feet. Bar, bar bend is good. I've got it in the stock number two position. Uh, frankly, I don't feel like I need to adjust it. Maybe I, I might roll it forward a little bit. Got plenty of room. Again, I'm 5'11". So that's pretty good. Pegs are really grippy. I like them more than IMS pegs, to be honest. IMS pegs I always slide off sideways. So these are really good. I really like the factory KTM pegs. Uh, the only thing so far or two things I don't really like. I think the brake pedal is, and I mean, this is part of this combination of things, but the rear brake's a little iffy. Don't super dig that, we'll have to play with it. And uh, I don't like the new K newer KTM levers. These are, I don't know if these are Bractec specific, but they always feel like they're kind of like, sh almost sharp. They're, the fronts of them, just don't feel nice. Like every, every, and it's, you know, I've been riding for probably almost, maybe not an hour, but 40 minutes now, and you'd think I'd be getting used to this already. But nope, every time I use it, I'm like, oh, this lever sucks. So don't really like the levers, unfortunately, because Bractec stuff's kind of new in the US. There's not a lot of uh, aftermarket alternatives. I was looking at my Magura Spare yesterday and it looks almost identical. So I'm gonna try and see. I've got a bunch of different levers at home, different bikes. I'm gonna try and see if anything fits. Oh yeah, this bike loves this kind of stuff. So yeah, the, the uh, important thing to remember about the 150 ergonomics wise is that it's the same physical size as a 250 or 300. Everything about it is the same except the engine, you know, gearbox. So it's not a small bike, it's a full, legitimately a full-size bike. Same brake, same suspension, same everything.
everything except the engine is smaller. That's it. So it's not a uh, bike for small people or whatever. Might be a bike for light people, but it's a full-size bike. All right, so let's talk about the handling a little bit. This is kind of a weird thing to talk about because the, uh, I, the tires on, on here, the stock tires, I don't like. For sand and loose stuff, they just don't grip very well compared to what I'm used to. These are the Dunlop Geomax AT81s with tubes, about 13 PSI, front and rear. And that's the biggest issue I'm having right now is it just sliding out in corners. I'm used to really leaning it over, but I feel like I can't. I, a lot of it is the tires. But I think the other thing that's interesting, you know, compared to a, to a 300, is that you don't have that inertia of the engine working with you to, to keep the bike upright. Or you do, but you have a lot less of it. And actually, the way they have the engine positioned in this bike might have something to do with that too, because it's it's slanted a lot more than the like the 300s, at least you know visually. Maybe that's not true. I don't know. To be honest, I just noticed that it's very slanted. The pipe almost points down, or the exhaust manifold. So what I'm used to on the 300 is you go in to a corner. And you uh, go in, you use a little bit of brake to stabilize the bike, you pitch the bike over, and then you, you give it a bunch of a bunch of gas, not even a bunch of gas, just, you know, some gas, to uh, get it back upright or, or keep it kind of going along a nice little arc. So you're not falling down more, you're not standing up. And that works really well. It works really well on the 300. It works really well. I have a DR650 that I ride in this stuff sometimes. That works really well on that bike too. On this bike, you it, you have to ride it almost like more like a bicycle. It's a lot more. In a way, it's less physical because it's lighter. You're not fighting the, all that inertia. In some ways, though, it's more physical because you are the one that actually has to straighten this thing out. Because so, it's a lot less stable and uh, giving you gas is not going to save you quite as much as it does on a bigger displacement bike. With more spinny things. Oh yeah, this is one of the technical sections. Let's see how we get on. That was good. Again, it's a little tricky not having that all that low in torque. You gotta make sure you your clutch work is on point on technical stuff like that. But that's actually a really good segue into uh, another handling thing is the balance. So I feel like this bike is, maybe because of the linkage, feels a lot more balanced front to rear. So like anytime you hit a bump or a whoop or something, the bike stays really flat. You go up in the air and you fly very flat. And I'm not a good jumper, it's just, it's all the bike. It just stays very level, which is really nice. Both my gas gas and uh, the KTMs I've ridden all tend to really... It's either too high or too low. And it kind of depends on how you have your suspension set up any given day. This one stays really flat, so, so that's really good. The other thing is... Uh, the balance. I've got decent balance. You know, I can do a track stand, but it's really easy on this bike. It's actually, 
feels more kind of, again, effortless. I don't know why, maybe because it's a little bit lower to the ground. So like static balancing is easier. Maybe it's something else with the ergonomics about it, but it feels easy, which is good. This kind of stuff is fun. So the other thing we got here is this map switch. So I just set it to map to um, map two, and which is supposedly like the mud map. And I can actually feel that it's kind of mellowed the power. I think it moved the torque curve down a little bit. So you can you know, just stick it in third gear and tractor through things. Probably can't see it on camera, but that was a decent little hill. I know people say they can't feel these, but this has definitely smoothed it out a bit. I think if you're a newer rider, or if you're looking for that like four stroke, feel or maybe you know maybe you had got a buddy riding or a girlfriend who's uh not ridden before this is a perfect bike for them so light and nimble it's kind of unintimidating you clip it into this map too and it takes some that hit away too so that's kind of a all the KTMs have that ability, but I think only the Husky comes with a switch. It's kind of a cool, cool little feature. So, just click it back into one here once we're past the sandy bit. Oh yeah, it's definitely got a little bit more go to it now. Woo. Need to do like a blind test with Buddy one time, just make sure I can't see it. Make a mess with it. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the reason why I went from a 300 two-stroke to a 150. Which, you know, seems kind of a weird move. And I've had a 250 four-stroke before. I've had a 200 two-stroke before for quite a few years, actually. I really like the 200 KTM. It's 2013 awesome bike and uh, from that 200 I went to a 300cc gas gas 2018 gas gas KYB suspension all the good stuff also a really awesome bike really good at like fast stuff you know anything about 20 above 20 miles an hour it was awesome man but it was also awesome in the really gnarly stuff because it frankly didn't matter what gear you were in. You know, one through four, you could go from a stop to like climbing a nearly vertical obstacle with zero issues. So that's an awesome thing and that's why people love 300s. They're really smooth, easy to ride. You know, power's not crazy, just a lot of torque, anywhere. And what I noticed after a couple years of riding it, so I've had it for 150 hours, right about two years. What I found is that I was getting lazy. And I was not really progressing as a rider because, you know, if anything technical came up, instead of uh, making sure I gear and had a good control or anything I would just you know give it power mid hill and the traction and the, the power would just pull me up which is not the way to do it because yeah you can do some stuff that way but eventually you're gonna get that hill that uh, or that's gonna bite you so and uh, on the more open stuff, I was really, I think the bike was riding me more than I was the bike. I was just holding on. So yeah, you could go really fast. 
if you could just hold on to the bike. You didn't really need, like I sh shift a lot, but you didn't really need to. So I didn't like that. I, I felt like I stopped progressing as a rider because the bike was making me lazy. Another reason actually was uh, when I did the only hard enduro I've ever done, Mad Moose, last year. I was so tired. Again, the whole bike riding me thing really comes into play when you're just exhausted. And I really, I, I really want to do some more hard enduros or hard enduro type riding. So what I realized is that for me at my skill level, the best thing I could do is get the lightest bike possible because it needs to be easy for me to ride. That's the biggest thing. All these bikes are way more capable than me, so I just need something easy to ride. And that way I'll enjoy it more. I'll be able to actually finish things. And so far, I will say this 150 is kind of exactly what the doc doctor ordered. 